happy Sunday, and welcome back to Retake the Week. It's been a sort of busy 14 to 21 days in Counter-Strike, and we did kind of take off last Sunday because I was out of the country and couldn't really record, especially seeing as my co-host refused to come down to Copenhagen to be there in person with me. So, instead we've put out a little member Q&A, a special one, a pretty long one, and it does mean that instead of just doing a regular retake of a single week, we're doing two. Uh, we're going to be talking about all things that we missed from the Major, as well as some of the other big uh, changes that have been happening. I mean, most of it's going to be Tier 2 stuff. There's been a lot of rosters shifting around and a lot of little things happening. But let's start with the Major. Quack, it was a pretty interesting Major in terms of the storylines. Uh, how invested were you? Because I know you were studying for exams, hence why you couldn't be in attendance. But did you actually get to catch a lot of the games, or was it a very miserable weekend for you? Um, I caught a lot of the games. I did watch it. I think I watched more of the opening stage than the challenger stage. But then, of course, we reached the playoffs, and well, they were the good games to really watch. Yeah. Um, more. Uh, I actually, I, I, I got to write the article on the on the grand final, which was really exciting. Uh, since my colleagues or my my one colleague <laughs> was in uh, <laughs> in uh, in Copenhagen, actually doing interviews and shit, so I, I had to put that together. But it was uh, it was one hell of a game to be watching. Um, a bunch of the other games were also really good. So uh, yeah, I was down. Unfortunately, I missed when. Um, actually, we'll get to that later when something special happened. But um, yeah, yeah, the thing, good the thing, <laughs> the thing. <laughs> but everyone knows exactly what we're talking about. But we will get to it eventually. First, let's talk about the major winning team. I mean, Navi, not someone I expected to really go that deep. I had them maybe as a quarterfinal team. I then had them, personally, my pick once we got to that point, getting upset by Eternal Fire, which, whilst it was wrong, wasn't that crazy considering that game was closer than you'd expect from a team that's clearly Tier 1 and a team that's been trying to punch up but really struggled to cement themselves in a Tier 1 space. Yeah, Eternal Fire gave them a bit of a scare, but they made it through. They beat G2. They had a... It was a decent final with FaZe. Uh, the map 3 really let me down. Like, map 2 as well wasn't great. But after the opening map, I had in my head, I was like, yeah, I definitely think FaZe is going to win map 2. We're going to get a great 3-map series. Instead, we got Biff, Boff, and it's over. It was like round 1 of this like 3-round heavyweight fight was really close, really tense. Then round 2, one guy got dropped. Round 3, finished. The other way. So a, a bit crazy to wrap your head around, especially if you're in the event and you're in the hall and you're watching it and the emotions are just like all over the shop. But all in all, they did play better than a phase who I believe kind of choked away that massive amount of momentum they had coming into map three. It was theirs to win. It felt like Carrigan, I don't want to put too much blame on just him, but I feel like a lot of the calls were botched. Some players missed their shots, and it all went down the drain. Yeah, I think uh, you've got to give a lot of credit to Navi as well, who sort of, I think, I, to, to a degree, I feel like their playoffs can sort of be described by individual overperformance as well um and if, well all right anyone who performed to the level they did definitely could but they don't normally consistently perform that way so i feel I, they we talked about how how many times can jl really life game well apparently enough times to win the major uh but yeah. also on that final map we had bit completely smashing uh smashing face and in the eternal fire game we had wonderful um, really stepping up in a big way and fragging hard, and it wouldn't be the same game if he was if he wasn't doing that. So, um, I mean, credit where credit's due. They are great, great, great players. But even prior in this major, um, wonderful was playing well, but he wasn't playing at the level he did in the internal fire game. And uh, Bith had been pretty much nowhere all major, but then of course, third map in the final. That's when he sort of blew up. Oh, yeah, he and, went uh, crazy. Yeah. Uh, actually, a, a, a first map as well. Um, but yeah, the third map especially, that was when he sort of really, it, it, yeah, he really wanted to win that major. Um, it's exciting. It's exciting to see Navi win another major. And it's obviously very exciting to see um, Alexi B win a major, which I think is, I don't know, if there was any guy who would go down in history as one of the better players to never win a major. It probably should have been Alexi B, but now he won't because he won a major. <laughs> so, um, yeah. yeah, it's uh, very interesting. It's also very interesting to see I uh, to see Emma uh, prior to the final Swiss game before mm. the playoffs. Him and Alexi B were the joint two lowest rated players of the entire major, and 
at 0.75 and that final Swiss game didn't really do much for him either. And I don't think the playoffs did very much for him to, to no, credit they, him they either. Both, they both ended up sub 0.9, which is awful. I absolutely yeah. horrified. For a team that wins the event, have two players sub 0.9 is just ridiculous. And that brings me on to the next part of this, which is, well, I have titled this video ahead of time. I've not told you this. I put it on the thumbnail. This is the Navi fluke. And I kind of want to say this. I can't remember who I had this conversation with. I believe it was Yumi on the double swing. He said that his pick of teams to like really do well in Counter-Strike 2, the team that's going to pick it up the most and learn fast, it's going to be Alexi B's team. It's going to be Na'Vi. Because Alexi B, you know, very studious type of IGL, very hungry to keep winning. And whilst he's technically right when we talk about just they won the first major, they were not this team for every event leading up to this. They hadn't magically outperformed out solutioned, out prepped everyone else. So to come into this event and win it off the back of calling a better game than most other teams, like pretty much every game involved at least one map where Alexi B out called the shit out of someone. Uh, we'll get into the Imma part of that equation actually in a bit. And then also JL pulling, I don't want to say literal bullshit out of his ass, but come on. <laughs> <laughs> the number of maps that man rescued from defeat with ridiculous shots. Like shots most players never hit in their career. And he had several maps with multiple examples. Yeah, it's it's I'm gonna call it a fluke. Especially when you look at the playoffs and you got wonderful playing nowhere near his level. You got bit having the occasional blip map and the biggest blip in the grand final map three. I mean watching that in the stadium was shocking like to say the least shocking like i just spent the entire time with my jaw just agape just how is he doing this and without fraggers without any consistency amongst their stars they managed to make it happen on the lowest win rate anyone's won a major on yes it has to be considered a fluke there's no other way to say it. if you believe this will be repeatable across several events i'm not even talking majors i'm talking other events like, this team is going to be a consistent grand final team because they're going to find a way to outcall and have JL become Nico. I think that's a bit absurd. If, if this team is to going to return to the top and consistently be at the top, it has to look way fucking different. It cannot look anything like mm. it did at this major because this is not repl replicable at all. Yeah. Um... So yeah, in that sense, it is definitely a fluke. I think I I don't I don't think Navi go storming into whatever event they have lined up. Um, what is it? EPL is their next one at the end of April. Um, I don't think they go into there and win that outright. I don't think they're favorites. I probably might not even put them top three to win that event. Out of full honesty, uh, and I think I think Navi have had an upwards trend since they went on this international team because it was sort of here and there at the start started working things out Imma was a problem and then sort of started improving and then come this major he was awful again um they had great performance at a bit they had the problem with simple obviously leaving the team that's a huge issue i think i think there's still positives to take away from navi because there's a lot of things that they can um that they, I think there's a lot of things they can take from this, and there is potential in this team with, you know, changes to be made. Mm -hmm. uh, that be player changes or just moving shit around. Like you can't rely on JL doing this every time, but perhaps you can find a way where Bit is the guy you rely on, unless he should be. Um, so I think there's potential in this team to start doing things, but they're not going to do it in the way they did in Copenhagen, as he said. No. Uh, but yeah, uh, JL deserves us more of a discussion here. I think um, yeah. I I tweeted before the final about the the MVP race, and it was I I think it was kind of close. I had I had him as my third candidate just because I thought Face were going to win the major, so I put mm. um, Frozen and Brokey as my top two candidates. Actually, it might have been Brokey first. Now that I think about it, um, it was always going to be JL. I think I don't think there was any way anybody outside chance of a wonderful stealing the MVP at the end, but that was never going to happen. So, um, well deserved. Um, amazing to see. I'm very, I was very happy about, about, um, JL, uh, watching him after the final. 
just <laughs> running around <laughs> being you know himself <laughs> um and yeah well like well deserved this is sort of i feel like this is sort of like when rain won the antwerp mvp like he shouldn't do this but he did and it led them to absolutely yeah to win the major yeah the rain one is a bit different because if rain doesn't play that way i've got players that i bet on to win the rounds anyway when jl did what he did for navi it, it literally was breaking everything we understood about this roster i mean when we've seen them have high placings before like they this kind of this it's not like this exact iteration of the roster but the version with simple uh, that managed to finish top two at pro league last year uh, yeah it didn't look like this we had elite play from simple we had amazing play from bit uh, pretty consistently so it wasn't that big a shock. I mean, I think even... I know, if I'm not going crazy. Yeah, we actually got a solid level out of Immer. He wasn't just the second IGL. Um, and when they finished top four at the... I think it's Blast Premier World Final, whatever it was called, they beat Entz. And they beat G2, who's a great matchup for them at this point. But they got stomped twice by Vitality, and it kind of looked how you'd expect this team to look. Um, so that's the other part I want to talk about briefly. Immer was incredibly vocal. If you're not, you don't realize this when you're watching on stream because you've only got one player cam at a time. But when you're in the mm -hmm. stadium, you've got all five on each side. And I spent the entire event, anytime Navi were on stage, watching who was talking and when. Immer speaks a lot. Mm -hmm. So I've got a feeling if this team is going to change and move things around, uh, I've got a feeling in their minds, it doesn't involve making Immer another star, like forcing that to happen. I do believe it involves putting more burden on Bit JL Wonderful as the star trio, and Immer joining like Alexi B and like the think tank of the team. Because they managed to make this work. Again, I did say a lot of it was out calling people, with Immer being incredibly vocal. So I think that's gonna be their solution going forward. It's not gonna be Immer, you're the Gamer Legion guy, you know? <laughs> Give us that level. Mm -hmm. It's, it's very much going to be an attempt to keep this going, but I just don't think it's possible. Uh, to have a superstar level JL isn't going to be a thing long term. Uh, to get Bit back up to a elite form could be possible, but he's always been a limited star. We've always had these conversations, even back when Navi were the full uh, Russian-speaking, Ukrainian-speaking, whatever we want to talk about it being today, uh, team, that, that roster, he wasn't a superstar in the other conventional rifling sense he was very limited he played certain spots incredibly well and there were conditions you needed to kind of fulfill before you got the best out of him uh, so i think the solution for this team moving forward has to be optimize bit pray wonderful takes another step up because at this event mm. it looks promising until he got on stage then it kind of fell down but he's so young they've got a lot of time to develop him it can still work with him as like their superstar because he really has proven to us that he can be that guy it's just he wasn't able to replicate it on stage so that's i think the solution long term they're not going to actually themselves i think rely on Immer coming back uh, into some sort of form and honestly based on the few type attempts we've seen from him i don't think he should if they want to be consistent i don't think that's going to be their solution i don't think so either i don't think that's what he's there to do really i think he's um he moved from Gamer Legion, where he was the main star, and in these sort of aggressive positions, he was supported by Kios. In this scenario, he sort of, I think this was what was talked about early on as well. In this Navi team, he's sort of playing both of those positions. He's playing both his, um, well, maybe more impact positions and also the more supportive, um, more traditional entry fragging role occasionally. That was mm. what was talked about early on, as at least. And that's obviously very difficult, um, and especially to transi transition between those. But I think, uh, there, I mean, yeah, there's a universe where um, he basically becomes your new Jax. Like, uh, you just rely fully on, like, you're more of a supportive element right now. Um, and that's that's definitely... It's interesting that he was talking so much, because I probably would have pinned JL to be the more vocal guy. Um I think, I think that's what a lot off of the server, said. when the game's not live, JL probably does do a lot of talking, and he's you know mm -hmm. probably the more charismatic, uplifting guy. Yeah, they've, they've said he's that's the vibe guy. He's, true. He is, like, he's yeah. the vibe guy of the team. Yeah, I mean you've seen that big shit eating grid he's always got stuck on his face. Like yeah, he has to be the vibe guy. Like <laughs> there ain't a whole lot going on I... between the ears, but the, that guy looks very happy to be around. Like very nice to be around. So 
That's I mean, obviously, e every time someone gets an HLTV MVP, they get a picture taken when they're holding the award. And oh, yes. uh, JL's picture is the best out of all of them. <laughs> no one has smiled that wide for HLTV MVP yeah. ever. Except he really, I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't hate it for it. I'm like, you know, very good on you. You deserve the MVP. You played <laughs> amazing Counter-Strike. I don't think you're going to do it again. But, you know, there you go. Kudos. You definitely deserved it. So, no, that's definitely the vibe I'm getting from the way the team is operating right now. Um, interesting to see how it goes forward because again I've, I've laid out what i believe they need to do what they believe i believe they need to change or at least look towards to actually progress and we'll see how they actually go about it but let's talk about some other teams because the major is massive uh we've got a lot mm. to talk about we do so i want to talk about a team who made the final and didn't win it uh spoiler it's phase because that's the only other team in the final <laughs> they kind of surprised me now, firstly, they played the best series of the playoffs, and I'm pissed off that I wasn't in the stadium for it. Instead, I was in a Weatherspoons at an airport, miserably waiting my hour-delayed flight. Which then, by the way, spent another half hour to 45 minutes on the tarmac, at which point I was still watching the event because it was still going on. <laughs> that game was crazy. But yeah, they played Spirit in their quarterfinal, and oh man, after Mirage, I was like, oh, FaZe have got their number. FaZe have masterclass veto especially once they beat them on mirage you look at the rest of the veto you think damn good job carrigan once again you've nailed it also what the hell are you doing chopper but we'll get to that when we get to map three but map two they win in overtime that was an insane map uh honestly over performances from some players but man the way the rounds were won in that game i was i was not doing well i i was hyperventilating, panicking, like thinking, oh my god, they're going to lose, no, they're going to win, oh my god, they're going to lose. It was a roller coaster, absolutely amazing. Um, and then map three rolls around, and you think, I had this conversation with Yumi on the double swing, I was like, I think for playoffs, because there's like a two, three day break, they're going to work on their vertigo, implement some stuff, and then allow it to be a punish pick. Like, allow it to be like, oh, you got us in map three, it's vertigo, surprise! Like... <laughs> they kind of did that not entirely but kind of like they allowed it through took some shit from a lot of people because everyone's like why would you do this you had so many better options in the map pool like you removed ancient we know you're great on ancient um but they tried this idea that i, I floated but only halfway because what i said they probably better off doing is moving donk into different roles and trying to optimize or completely changing up the way they play donk side of the map Instead, they kind of went halfway with it. Like, they kind of added some elements to the way they played Donk's stairs position, like, allowed him to wander forward sometimes, allowed him to rotate more off that spot into mid. And it didn't really do enough. It did plenty. Like, I think prior to these changes, they lose that map convincingly. Um, but instead, they unhaul this massive streak arounds to come back, bring it to OT, uh, just for them to go and lose. Um, <laughs> which is kind of tragic. Oh, they actually lost it in OT. It was an inc insane effort to get back to it. Really wasn't expecting them to pull that off. Uh, but it showed that they had done a lot of work from their vertigo. They tempted to do what I said they would do. Just, just a little bit off. Just a little bit off. But what an epic series that was. Like, I'm sure you watched it. Hopefully you watched. You didn't watch Spirit Phase. I watched, I watched the end of it. I couldn't catch it. I was busy, unfortunately. But... Uh... That's terribly disappointing. Yeah. That was terribly an incredible, disappointing. incredible game. Yeah. Uh, I think, honestly, Spirit probably should have won that game. Um, and I think there was an interesting point brought up by Note, um, which was uh, Halley mentioned in one of the interviews that they weren't able to practice at all between the Swiss and playoffs, Wait, uh, like as a team. Yeah, because they had two players who were sick. Um, and they, and they just the, all of their prep, all of their prep between the Swiss stage and the playoffs was individual, so they didn't actually were weren't actually able to like practice as a group, and that really hampered them. He saw he thought, but he also didn't use it as an excuse. He still said like we played worse and we lost and we deserve that. Um, oh, I just gave them all remember, that credit, all that credit, and you're telling me they flew you know, all of that, that vertigo game. I'm 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 guessing like whatever this individual practice might have meant, they still might have prepped a lot and like done Honestly, their homework on their own, have, but like. like I guess he means in the same it's, room because y'all have got Discord, yeah. right? Like I know, oh, actually, no, never mind. Every Russian I met in CS has just spoken in in-game chat in Russian to each other. So maybe they don't know what Discord yeah. is, but still, yeah. 
Uh, I, I think, yeah, what it means is it isn't in the same room and probably maybe not for the same amount of hours. Uh, yeah, probably not. Um, so, also, what should we call it? Like theory sessions. Uh, I know that's mm -hmm. something uh, Kassad loves to bring up, but something obviously teams yep. do is like watch demos back as a group in the same room. So you can easily yep. pause, like say, what's this? Switch to this angle. What 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 went wrong here? Like, I guess it's that kind of prep that they, they were missing, not the what I call tier two practice of like, yo, we're all on a call. Someone share their screen type shit. So I'm assuming yep. there was plenty it's of totally. that going on. If that doesn't happen, they probably win that. And Note brought up that it was very interesting when uh, other teams earlier in the event used the same excuse. They were like, oh, we're sorry. Um, feel better. And then when Spirit do it, it's like, oh, that's a cheap excuse for losing. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> Yeah. The expectations yeah. were set pretty uh, high, though, for them. Like Everyone expected this to be Spirit's major after that Katowice. But of course, who had to stand in the way? The god. The goat. I refuse to hear any glaive arguments. Never really cared for them the moment he got his major, but especially mm -hmm. don't anymore. Like, save it. Carrigan's been the goat, and that was mm -hmm. a classic Carrigan series. Like, you have yeah. outmaneuvered them in the veto to a, as best as you can. You then win close games over and over again. Like, yeah, absolute Carrigan moment. Yep. Um... Also an absolute Kerrigan moment, third map in the finals. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's some old school Kerrigan. That's some full that's Danish some roster Kerrigan. That's some I original thought, super team Kerrigan. That's crazy. I thought I think I think thirty minutes after the final, I saw someone posted like highlights of Kerrigan from Inferno, yes. and it was best frag, worst frag, most <laughs> yeah. impactful frag, best round, all of this stuff. I could and tell I you exactly like, where it was when that came out as well. <laughs> Yeah, like you, I'm, I was like, man, you saw this guy crying. His dad was in the crowd, and you post this minutes after he loses. Have some heart. Like at least wait until tomorrow. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> Dude, I was in the uh, Copenhagen, like the big square, the main square, like McDonald's mm -hmm. with some friends. <laughs> <laughs> mm. going through twitter as the full crowd basically enters this mcdonald's we got there early we left the second <laughs> map three finished because we knew at this time of night there's not going to be a lot of options because they started the game so late that's enough of, that's another bone i have to pick with pgl or whoever the fuck mm. had this idea but more importantly i'm in this mcdonald's i've got like my ridiculous mountain of food because i'm like haven't eaten since 12 and they mm. have a bunch of menu items i've never seen so of course i ordered all of them and I'm sat there, just going through my Twitter quickly, and I see this pop up, and I immediately start cackling to myself. <laughs> I was like, that is so disrespectful. That is elite level haterism. I aspire yeah. to be this, like, quick-witted with yeah. my petty hatery. That was amazing. That was hilarious. Um, yeah. But if we can give him one more compliment before we uh, move on. That semi-final against Vitality... Uh, the way they had to grind their victory against Spirit, I thought, yeah, Vitality coming into this, stomped Cloud9, full momentum. It's going to be rough for FaZe. Well, Map 1 shut that right up. Like, Map 1 was just, nope. Who's Zai Wu? Is he, is he still sick? Is he throwing up on stage? What, who is this guy? I've never heard of him. Clearly some crappy French prospect. They absolutely battered them on Nuke. Not only were the individuals shining, they outcalled them on Nuke. It was disastrous for vitality i mean vertigo honestly i remember watching it in the stadium thinking who's who's hating on mezzi now who's hate who's hating on mezzi what a map mezzi like he was outstanding i mean the entire like rifle core kind of had their moments on vertigo for vitality but yeah the inferno that made me believe that phase were major champions like they looked so yep. unbothered by everything and so many of their players performed really well uh yeah i just i just thought at that point it's over they're winning the major i i could see who was going to come out the other side of the bracket i mean this was the first game of the day if i'm not going crazy so we had the other game coming up afterwards uh mm -hmm. let me just check yeah four o'clock naturally when you start a game first game of the day fuck but <laughs> i see the other side of the brackets navi g2 and i'm like if g2 come through phase is gonna out call them outplay them it's fine navi come through who the hell's gonna outfrag them who on earth is going to outfrag him? And we saw in the final was JL. JL then bit on map three. <laughs> that, that was essentially the, yep. the, uh, the answer to that question. Uh, it made perfect sense once you thought about it. Um, let me pick, ask you this. Pick a team that in this playoff bracket you were most disappointed in. And I think I know who you're going to pick, 
but I'm going to let you take a take a shot. Like who did it, you disappoint you? Most? I, yeah, I was disappointed with Miles. I thought that that G two game should have been a win. Um, they just played. I think they played a sloppy game. I think uh, some of the individuals I would have expected to show up really didn't. Um, desertion, namely, and then also uh, Nico showed up, uh, which was. I mean, I, all right, it's not an unexpected, but like it's unfortunate when he's been poor all event and then in this game he goes kind of big. Uh, Mouse were my, I was disappointed in Mouse, but um, but also like it's also kind of expected. It's not, it's not hugely unexpected. Um, there's this air around Mouse for me where like I see them as one of the top contenders for like winning events and it's like a great team. But I, there's also this air of like, if they go out in quarters, that's fully expected. I mean, look at this team; it shouldn't be winning. That's sort of like my vibe, right? And uh, so I was a bit, I was a bit disappointed, but not entirely, not entirely unexpected. And mm. uh, I mean, yeah, hopefully Chengdu is nicer to them. I, there's the hope that maybe Phase and G two still have some fatigue from making deeper runs into the event i think it was also it was also unfortunate we're gonna move on to i think it's time to move on to this now but during the that phase yeah it's gonna come up obviously yeah yeah there was the stage storming which was uh huge (laughs) when when it happened i dm'd my my boss who was in copenhagen and he said what the fuck is going on and he just said i'm stressed out (laughs) like that was (laughs) just one word uh but then he uh but but yeah, I think that that impacted Mao's more than G two because if I'm not mistaken, it was on their side of the stage. Oh, it and, must it, uh, well, I'm not sure about the exact logistics of that, but I know from what players have said, it definitely impacted Mao's a lot more than G two. <laughs> like, if yep. not physically in terms of them being moved, mentally in terms of them being absolutely shook, like that massively impacted yep. them. Because they also didn't know what the fuck it was about. I, I, mm-hmm. they took a lengthy break, and I don't think they got like the full story behind it and realized like, oh, we're fine. Like, this is just some idiot about some skin gambling stuff. They could, yeah. they like, I don't think they got the full story. I think at that point they were just sort of like, let's ignore this. Let's focus on the game. But then you're sort of thinking like, why the fuck were there people on stage running towards me? Like, what the fuck? Mm. Is this some other shit? I mean, okay, uh, that was second half of the second map. So, or right before the second half of the second map. So I don't think it was like massive but it's a shame for something like that to potentially interfere with the with a major quarterfinal and uh i think that definitely uh, impacted mouse in that game but let's talk about that it was uh CSO Actually, Empire. I've, got, I've got some stuff to talk about the game before we even talk about oh. the details of why and what and who the fuck um because actually map one went as i kind of expected because it's the big mm-hmm. stage it's g2's pick it's inferno i kind of had that as a g2 win uh, the way it happened with uh, what's it, Nico going kind of insane, whilst Hooksy and Hunter are the ones att- like accompanying him at the top. Maybe not exactly how I saw it. Like replace Hooksy with Munsey. Now we're talking, uh, but it was kind of insane that game. A great game from Nico. It's really solid, honestly, series from Hunter that you don't usually expect. We've seen a lot of well lows from Hunter, but on the big stage, he tends to be far more composed and far more performant than most young players ever can be. I think he's got that massively in his favor. But map two, Vertigo. Look at the first half. Mao's on T side. They get five rounds. Brolan is cracking things open. Torji mopping things up. You're thinking, this team's doing great things. Like, move on to their CT side. Just got a clean house. Like, hold on. You'll get some performance out of Jimmy now. You'll get maybe Zertion wake the fuck up. Because he was poor, no matter what we give as an excuse. He was poor. Mm-hmm. Then the halftime thing happens. We hit, we read, well, later read in articles. They were moved off the stage, brought back on stage, moved off stage again. Like, they weren't, like, just dealt with. Like, just, all right, sit tight, it's cool. No, no, they were, they, t- they were told to treat this like it was an evacuation, like there was a real problem. Um... Uh, so that breaks their mental. They lose the second half disastrously. Like, they don't even look awake. They don't look in the game at all. Not a single player performs. They lose the half 6-1. I think without the bullshit, uh, without those cunts getting involved, Mao's win map 2. And I think we're talking about a very different series, obviously, once we get to map 3, which I've forgotten the veto already. Overpass. Yeah, once we get to Overpass, a map I love Yimfat on. I think Torji has really good moments because you can get creative on CT side with your AWP. 
This is a map that I think suits Mouse's strengths. I don't think G2 really had it in them to go three maps on a big stage, considering the underperformances of Hunter historically, like, not historically, recently, and the way that, like, well, Nexo, Hooksy don't frag at all, and Monacy wasn't having the greatest series. I think map three could have been very telling. I think it might have ended up being a massive brawl between, like, the top two or three riflers on Mouse and Torji versus Monacy and Nico. I think that would have been a crazy game to see. Instead, it got ruined by, as I said, some cunts. So, speaking of cunts, you're an expert on them. Tell us what went down in graphic detail, please. Um, the TLDR of it is that there are two gambling sites. So at this point, we're talking gambling, not betting. So we're talking um, playing on chance, basically, roulette and stuff. Um, skin, skin gambling sites, CSGO Roll and CSGO Empire. Um, CSGO Roll are one of the main sponsors of uh, G2 Esports. And their CSGO team specifically, I think. And uh, CSGO Empire is run by a guy called Monarch, who believes i don't know if there's any truth to this there might be i would absolutely not put it past um skin gambling sites to be scamming people but he believes that csgo role are operating um dishonestly and scamming their customers in some way and um as a demonstration against them and against g2 being sponsored by that team he uh basically said i anyone who storms the stage at the major while g2 are playing i will pay them thousands of dollars and uh, some people did and they got grabbed off off the stage, um, and that was about it. And then he said that he's going to do even more stuff. Uh, there was there were some stream outages in the following games with the G two, and I don't know. People were saying that oh, this was like a DDoS attempt attempted by him, and I think he even said like, "Yeah, this was us." But then it turned out it wasn't. It was just a network fault, like at the venue. Um, but yeah, it's. It's just, it's hardly worth talking about like why it happened or that sort of thing. Um, what happened was they stormed the stage. Um, in the chaos that happened, then uh, the trophy was knocked over and broke. Um, yeah. And it was a lengthy delay as they were grabbing these people. And it turned out security wasn't really the biggest thing here. Um, the people who were security were really not really prepared for this i mean this has never happened i honestly don't really blame them for being this underprepared this is unheard of at a csgo major and if you and uh, if you asked me at some point in the playoffs will something happen with a spectator running on stage or something i would have said no that never happens in counter strike it won't happen so um i think they were caught a bit off guard from this it's still stupid that it was not really prepared for but fair credit to them the following day they had like wider fences in front of the in front of the stage they had probably more personnel and probably more uh, people watching for this i do feel like when we did see the navi players celebrating out in the crowd i feel like there were more people like holding people in check and there was more of a distance to the crowd so i think they did really step things up and there's two positive outcomes out of this i think this would be an amazing opportunity for valve to finally just put the ban hammer down for skin gambling sites and just say you guys are profiting off of IP of, of our IP it's harmful to young people it's harmful to our player base and we profit absolutely nothing from it so from now from now on no gambling sites and just leave it at that and they did one small thing about like trading which made peer to peer trading worse and i think it also had an impact on gambling sites but i don't know how the fuck that worked and uh, that's one of the positives that could come out of it. It hasn't happened yet. I think it would happen at some point. Mm. And the other positive is we hopefully have much better security at upcoming events uh, forever. So, um, mm. I mean, sometimes it sometimes it, it's, it takes an incident to be like, well, fuck, we need to do something about this. And hopefully TOs are going to start thinking about that in the future. All right. Well, first off, I give zero leeway to security for being... Uh, half asleep um i don't care that this is a csgo event you're not csgo event security you are not the group of cunts that volunteer at dreamhacks um to be security you are paid security at an event hall there's no excuse um secondly why did it take this sort of bullshit happening for us to take security seriously everyone's been talking about this for decades i'm not taking the piss decades it's not a new conversation the fact that esports mm -hmm. events gaming events 
don't take each, like their security seriously at all has been a massive issue. We are lucky that the reason we woke the fuck up, I mean, we, TOs, woke the fuck up to this, is that someone ran on stage to protest CSGO role. We're very fucking lucky oh, yeah. that it wasn't oh, yeah. some dickhead with a gun, bomb, machete, fuck knows what else. I mean, I went through the security checks at this event. If I wanted to, I could. So you can't just be like, oh, damn. Good thing we got a reminder if you're a TO. Like, oh, now we know. Like, no. No, dickhead. <laughs> no. You've been shit at this forever. We've been telling you you've been shit at this forever. You got really fucking lucky. Um, also, I, I read online that the people who decided to stall on the stage were part of some, like, internet, like, social justice group. Like, not social justice, like, wannabe vigilante group. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, I kept seeing their Twitter posted everywhere on the CSGO Empire stuff, like, you know, in responses and promoted. Uh, promoted by like people I think who were CSGO and buy related y'all are cringe like, really cringe because everything you do like, it seems to be is just really dumb like what is this you protested you on the behest of someone who exploits children protested someone for exploiting children are you I think I think it was something more stupid? that he thought, he thought CSGO role had some slightly different business model and then he thought it was a pyramid scheme but yeah, it is it is inherently a business model that fucks over the consumer. We all know that. You are the house all always cunts. Like why yeah. why <laughs> do any of you get the right to protest the other? None of you do. They even tried to yeah. and this was delicious karma outside of the event set up like uh like this four panel sort of like big billboard to protest, like where people were arriving to the Royal Arena. And I think the heavens above spoke as the wind was so strong they couldn't fucking do it. It kept falling down. And as someone who was outside finishing off a couple beers and reading the TLDR magazine, which if you were at the event, you missed out. That shit is so cool. Um, we're just having a laugh, just watching these assholes and trying to put up this fucking protest billboard against CSGO Roll. And every time they put one bit up, another bit fell down. <laughs> <laughs> to the point where security at the event just like guys like just 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 fuck off like just stop trying yeah. go away you're, you're kind of in the way it's a crossing you're gonna let some shit go in the road at some point just go away and they gave up and packed yep. it up but that was that was hilarious actually i'm gonna i'm gonna run to my bookshelf and show you this thing well show everyone else because you can't see me um but yeah if you want to make you missed out on this hang on spoiler for all of you who are watching I mean, you see me here, and I, I presume T is over on that side or something. I, I've never seen him. <laughs> I have, but like when we record this podcast for however many weeks now, I've never seen him once. So when I watch back and like I see all of his little facial reactions and stuff, that's all news to me. Yeah, it's like what he 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 wrinkled his brow when I made this opinion known. Like uh, I didn't know he thought that way <laughs> about about this thing. Yeah, but I'm usually very quick uh, to tell you then exactly what yeah. I think. So, <laughs> but no, this stuff is. This, this was amazing. Like, I showed up to the event for the semifinals because I didn't have quarterfinal tickets. They're usually not very good, the quarterfinals. This event was a massive exception. Um, and I show up, and I see this guy handing out stuff. And I'm looking, I'm expecting just some bullshit. But then uh, one of the people I was with picks it up, turns it over, and I realize it's a full-on TLDR magazine with, like, segments about if every player was like out drinking with you like what kind of like drinks are they and like how do they drink like silly little articles like that a very interesting um sponsored segment from steel series um interviews with like different people op-eds like written by members of talent like lucy loose has a part in there about the women's scene it's really cool so i was like yo yeah. this, this is one of my fucking highlights of the event is just picking up this fucking magazine <laughs> with some Aroma Bib artwork on the back as well. It's so sick. So I was not expecting that at all. Um, but yeah, whilst I was flicking through that, sipping my uh, craft Danish beer that was in my bag and definitely wouldn't make it into the event because I didn't know how the checks were done yet. They would have, they did, they too. Um, yeah, I just got to watch the CSGO roll guys get absolutely screwed over by the wind. Or as I'm going to put it, God, because Screw you. Uh, God was on G2's side this event. They shouldn't have made the quarterfinals. They shouldn't have made it to the semis. Clearly, someone had it out for you lot. And I think it's the big man upstairs. <clears throat> Let's all pretend we're religious here. And yeah, that was an amusing way to wrap up that series of events. It was a terrible thing. Just unnecessary. Perpetrated by dickheads. But I got some, I got some 
joy out of it in the end. Like, I got a little yeah. bit of uh, pleasure from the whole situation. Yeah, uh, I would imagine that's funny. I didn't actually... I assume someone would have caught it on tape, but I, I completely missed that happening. That's uh, Yeah, there's a, apparently the... Oh, the other guys trying to put up their stuff. Oh, no, okay, so that yeah. was too yeah. extended of a, like, thing. Like, I was out there, like... I'm talking, like, 45 minutes to an hour just watching these guys struggle. Oh. No one would have sat there with their fil fil film dicks. Everyone was just walking past them. Going, what the fuck are they doing? Picking up their free TLDR yeah. magazine and then just going straight to the stands. <clears throat> Because so that place um, filled up yeah. like so early, it filled up really quick. Because the game started so late, but what the fuck's everyone going to do on a Saturday till like four o'clock? Well, five mm -hmm. o'clock local time. Like, there's nothing to do, so everyone just showed up to the event and got their seats. Yeah. So it was a struggle to get a seat. Cause nothing was assigned, but no, that was that was a stupid part of the major that we just didn't need. It was <laughs> superfluous to having a good major. And I've talked so much for the last segment. I'm almost dead. Uh. Memorable, wow. memorable, if nothing memorable, else. Memorable, if, if anything else. If nothing else. Uh, mm. It'll definitely have a lot of impact on this year, how it's remembered. And there's definitely going to be a lot of arguing come the end of the year. Like, oh, why haven't Navi made it as a top three team of the year? They were major winners. And we're going to have to go, uh, <clears throat> Fluke, didn't we tell you? We told you, we told you exactly why as well. Like, and that's why they didn't win shit all else. Please refer to that. Um, yep. Ahead of time. I'm just going to use this clip. I'm not going to respond to people. Uh, but all right. You've put four major TOs. Have I missed something? Uh, so basically, oh. during the event, we did get some other good news. PGL are bringing back a pretty extensive calendar. I think 11 events over two years. Pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, as the age of... Uh, how do we call it? Semi? Partnerships. Like partnership leagues. Like They're not full-on franchise leagues, but yeah, oh. like partnership leagues, as we've come to know them. That era is kind of dead. Long live the open circuit. That means people are returning. So not only did this sort of partnership stuff not really make the scene that much more profitable for teams, um, it seems it didn't really help TOs. And the open circuit that's less profitable is better. So that's a whole conversation I'm sure that will be had by people who know far more about the inner workings of uh, tournament organization and other stuff. Essentially, hopefully in about a year's time, there'll be a very helpful two-hour-long episode of The Four Horsemen with a very knowledgeable guest that I will watch and get a better understanding of why this happened. <laughs> but for now, I'm just going to be happy about it. PGL announced their return. Star Ladder announced a couple of events. And you said four major TOs yeah, announced because... calendars. Are you talking about I, like ESL announced their calendar and Blast? Yeah, we never talked about ESL and Blast on this show, so I just Oh, four. okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I, so think, I think we now have a good idea what's going on, don't we? Yeah, I think with PGL and Star Series, I don't think there's another major TO who's going to come in. I mean, there's going to be the weird one-off event like uh well just like you know a global esports tour yeah, or Spy, right sky esports i think it's gonna have a few events yeah. i'm gonna try to run yeah but in Good terms of like it. the major calendar where our actual top teams are gonna be willing to show up um i think we have pretty much everything so we have quite a few big events for 2025 and a few of them overlap slightly and i think i think we're gonna see a lot more overlap in practice than the calendar actually suggests because there are some events that are like one day apart where you'll have uh let me see if i can find one for example here esl finish one event on april 27th while blast start another on april 28th so we're gonna have i mean in practice a lot of teams maybe not all of them maybe someone is gonna attend both but a lot of the top teams are or some of the top teams are probably gonna pick one or the other because the otherwise the travel would be horrible mm. so um yeah it's going to be interesting to see i think a lot of people have been when they looked at the schedule i think a lot of people on the face of it um said oh no there are uh, conflicts we're not going to see all of the top teams at all of the events and i thought well that's actually quite interesting because that leaves more spots open for more competitors we're going to see yeah because if we just had the same 16 team events all calendar long and then uh 14 of them are occupied by the same top teams every event that's kind of boring um now we're instead gonna have maybe a 16 team event hosted by esl where the top eight are actual top teams we expect and then another eight are sort of like huh like because the other teams have skipped there's going to be more spots for so some of the lower teams to uh try to come in and maybe make an impact because uh all of the invites i did talk about this today the uh all of the invites are also going to be 
um, in the uh, in uh, uh, decided by Valve ranking. That's uh, that's what the ruling is right now. That all events need to use Valve ranking for their invites, at least their ordering. Um, so exactly which partition of it you do. I, I'm assuming you could do like, we want to host a Swedish event. You could pick all the Swedish ones, but you have to invite them in Valve ranking order. That's what it is right now. It might change, but uh, that's also going to make it interesting because that means we are going to have the same invite list for all of the top events um, that are happening at the same time, but the teams themselves are going to have to pick and choose. And this sort of ends up being with what I think uh, the Flashpoint people intended for at the start of 2020, when they effectively wanted to create um another tournament circuit and they sort of brought in the idea of let's have a franchise league with some top teams and then ESL stole most of the top teams for their own franchise league which launched at about or franchise league their own partnership yeah. which launched launched at the same time so i think this is sort of going to be that but uh obviously slightly more open and it's going to be mm. interesting to see i think I, there's not much more to touch on uh, from from my part but that's uh, it's going to be interesting to see the 2025 csgo scene Hopefully we can also, I'm going to be honest, I am kind of tired of these massive 16-team events with two groups of eight, double a limb, all this shite that lasts like 10 days or six days. These so long events. Like, I get, like, I like having a, f like, how do I put it, a rigorous system for, like, determining our top teams, but, oh my god, it gets long. It gets so long, all year long, all you see is like, I am, like, broadcasts, ESL broadcast, and it's, again, as you said, like, a lot of the same teams playing such massive brackets. And then especially because you look at a lot of the ESL events, and it's like regional invites and regional qualies. So the teams that are getting rotated in and out endlessly are dog shit. Because it's like, hey, we put three Chinese teams in this event, like, <laughs> so they can all get battered. Is that, what's the point? What's the point? But if we have, say, two eight-team events almost concurrently, and we instead, like, say there's six invites and only two, like, maybe open qualifier teams, especially because EU ones, I'm assuming, will be using, like, EU qualifiers, you're going to get more variety of teams playing each other. You're going to get better teams, I think, qualifying if you're not just having fuck tons of openness to it because there's 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 such things too open you know it's like being open-minded you know don't be too open-minded your brain falls out like come on do we need lin vision fly quest nemiga wildcard 9z tyloo and steel helmet who've now replaced monty by the way uh that that just mm -hmm. happened um do we need all of those teams in attendance at i am chengdu at an extreme masters event do we need all those little shitty asian teams i don't think so we don't even have the best asian team the mongols so what's the point? <laughs> this, this is not very fun to me. Uh, especially seeing as these close qualies spit out the most random nonsense sometimes. Like Because they, they all start with massive open qualifiers. Because you know you can invite teams to qualifiers, right? You don't have to do this crap. Where well, we end up with five Russian stacks and Guild Eagles as your qualifier teams to make your big event. Or you can hand out invites to teams on a regional basis based off ranking and like maybe invite tier two teams that are actually fun but yeah i think eight team events will be helpful in that sense we won't have to deal with such bloated events that last so long um and yeah hopefully also we see a little more diversity in talent um no offense to sponge and machine i want to hear someone else um, same thing actually can go to all the tier one casting duos like no offense to any of them they're all really good but i want to hear someone yeah. else's voice for once like Harry and Hugo, I still struggle to remember which one's which, to be honest. And like, I could do with listening to someone else. I think, like, the banana shaped one is the lower pitch voice, but I, I don't know. Like, I was the clap, you know, the line every classic duo needs a, a banana shaped one and an orange shaped one. Like, <laughs> like, you're the banana, I'm the orange in this context. Like, probably, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, I know you're a good three inches taller, and I know I'm a good 30 kilos heavier. So. <laughs> uh, 20 but still uh yeah the uh yeah that's what i'm saying like maybe a more diversity in talent like different desks hosts i mean i know um I think doran pushes for tech girl a lot and the little i've seen of her because i don't watch many desks she has been very a very good desk host very consummate professional um really good at what she does so like seeing more of those people outside of fucking like impact league would be cool uh even though 
Impact League has had its own share of disastrous hires, there has also been some decent talent come through in those events. So I think seeing more of those people will be interesting. I think... I mean, I hope that we end up with just more mid-tier European teams getting better chances. Because if you're a team that's in EU trying to compete with the rest of EU, holy crap is it difficult. But if you're just the third best NA team, hey yo, I am fuck knows where in the US, I'm basically there. The two best NA teams mm. get the qualify, like get invited. I get to play a quali versus fucking like wildcard boss, all these sorts of teams. I've got a great chance of being in a tier one event. Whereas if I am like objectively 10 times better, but I'm only the 30th best team in Europe, I'm, I'm playing online get account strike till I die. Till I die. I do not get to play any lands. So I think it'd be nice to see more of the tier two scene get, get some events. Maybe maybe some of the PGL events can be like tier two exclusives. Or maybe this addition of these major TOs inspires the smaller TOs to come back. Maybe we see more dream hacks. Maybe we see some of that. Like ESL goes, oh shit, we don't dominate the entire calendar. How about we control the tier two scene as well? More dream hacks. Maybe something like that can happen. That's what I'm hopeful for. I'm winning... I'm waiting for WePlay to do something, but maybe they folded it completely. WePlay? Oh, no. yeah, because they, they stopped because of the Ukraine stuff. Um, mm. Maybe the return of the Academy League would be cool. We can see uh, some teams in action. That'd be fun. Mm. That'd be fun, yeah. I've, I've done, I mean, I'm just checking their Liquipedia to see if there's an official announcement on there to say they're... Um, no, I think they just kind of disappeared after one season, and understandably, because where the hell are you going to host the event out of? Um, but... I mean, things are kind of calming down, I guess. There's regions in Ukraine where you could probably operate. You could just move the operation elsewhere. Um, yeah. If you really wanted to. So maybe possible. But I don't know. Maybe maybe they're completely gone. I don't know. Um, it doesn't seem they're... I mean, they've gone announced... I just checked the their, their little video at the bottom. There's, an, there's a link to a thing of them ending their cooperation with specific Ukrainian guys. And in the same announcement in their own article saying they're trying to look more international. So maybe they are still looking for ways to come back, just maybe less Ukrainian focused, because that's very limiting, obviously. So yep. that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, especially because keeping Ukrainian operations in Ukraine, um, I don't know if you realize how this works. They probably can't use Ukrainian talent in Ukraine if they want them to not go fight in the war. Uh, oh, I, yeah, a friend of a fair. friend made it to the border thinking he could be a humanitarian helper seeing as he has Ukrainian citizenship and they were like you cross the border you're in the army and so mm. he went to Hungary instead so <laughs> it's something to bear in mind that maybe operating in Ukraine just isn't an option if you're Ukrainian that is, that is possible yeah but you, I, like you said you could just go to uh, <clears throat> you could just go to some other country just but go like, somewhere there, else dickhead. if you really wanted to run this operation you probably could um I mean, yeah, you have to look somewhere else that's affordable as well for your kind of budget. Yeah. But like, yeah, Romania has always been an option for teams to TOs to save money. I'm sure PGL, being Ukrainian, R Romanian themselves, hopefully one of their events can be hosted out there. Uh, probably see like mm -hmm. a PGL. I don't know what they're going to brand it as, like PGL Winter Slam, uh, Cluj Napoca mm -hmm. or something like that would be cool. I mean, you know, throwback to the greatest major ever when the uh, the God King Kenny S won his major. <laughs> oh. The good old days. The yep. good old days. <laughs> so yeah, that's going to be something to look out for. I think Tio's returning. It's it's hopefully something that I didn't change the topic. It's just just not just out of the rhythm, guys. Just out of the rhythm. <laughs> something to come back would be cool. Would be just like this top stuff, like you know, trickle down, like bring some Tio's back to tier two, so we can get more of those oh, smaller uh, events. Yeah, speak, speaking of hosting a TO out of Ukraine, that's what Starlight are doing, and they just announced a two-year calendar. So, yeah. Are they actually in Ukraine, though? I'm not sure they're actually in Ukraine, but I'm pretty sure they are Ukrainian, or at least have been. So uh, I thought Starlight was Russian, I'm going to be very honest with you. I did check back, and a lot of their stuff... I think they are just CIS, but yes, they are headquartered no, no, they in they are Kiev. Ukrainian, okay. Yeah. Hmm. But I think historically they've been like operating everywhere, but now I guess they are Ukrainian, yeah. You know, their, found their location is Ukraine. Their headquarters are in Kiev. Or oh, Kiev. Yep. They used to be in Kiev. Whether or not they're still there is another question entirely. But yeah, it'll be cool <laughs> to see them come back. And yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the topic. The topic at the bottom of the screen was there for all of 30 seconds. So have fun me finding it in the actual VOD to put the timestamp in. Uh, but all right, let's move on to the next big piece of news, which actually is what we've been talking about briefly in... Um, 
in passing, but we now have to talk about it properly. And that's the Get Rio debacle. Uh, Get Rio. Very interesting uh, name. It's Global Esports Tour, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. They're hosting an event in Rio de Janeiro. And I'm going to be honest, when I looked at the team list, I was a bit underwhelmed. A bit. And there's a lot of Brazilians involved, for obvious reasons. But I was a bit underwhelmed. And do you know what this event reminds me of? Mm-hmm. Well, it reminds me what? of it makes me feel. I feel like in about a week's time, there's going to be a lot of very sad Brazilians. Um, cause I, I, I think OG are going to win this. That would be OG crazy. are going to win this. But anyway, let's talk about the actual news surrounding it rather than the actual uh, event itself because that's the point of this segment. Now, something's happened with Prezi. Now, the team was dropped... And now the invite to the actual five players disappeared. Is mm-hmm. that essentially it? Is there more to it? Like, what do we know publicly? That is, f- that is effectively it, but it's a bit, it was a bit complex because the players didn't know that they were losing the invite when the team dropped them. Because uh, in their like, okay. pre-agent announcement that they put out, they also did say, we currently have these invites, and one of them is for CCT's upcoming bigger event, uh, and the other one was for Get Rio, which is a $200,000 event. Um, so they didn't even know about this. And then a couple of days later, they announced, uh, Get Rio announced that Pain was the replacement event because the um, the invite had been revoked from Prezi. Uh, the players then sort of went, hang on, you guys told us that we were keeping our invite. And then they were like, uh, actually, no. And then Prezi were like, hang on, you guys told us that we were keeping the invite and we could just send our academy team. And then we're like, ah, actually, no, that's against the rules. And we didn't tell you that at all. You just assumed. And then... They invited Payne, regardless. Turns out the invite was extended to the org and not the players. And if the tournament organizers really wanted to, they could have kept the invite on the pre uh, on the pre-C team, as in the squad that are now ex preci looking for an org. And uh, but they didn't. They instead invited a Brazilian team, and a lot of people took this as uh, they just wanted another South American team to be at the event. Which is, I mean, it's an invitational event. There's already, there were already four here, I believe. So why not a fifth? Um, but yeah, that was kind of the debacle. It was a whole deal. It it was all over Twitter. I think there was even like a. Uh, I think there was at one point the official Prezi account asked, uh, like uh, when they announced the pain invite, there was a quote tweet from the official Prezi account that just said, "Wait, I thought we were invited." <laughs> like, <laughs> like uh, it was all kind of public. All of this. Instead of happening behind closed doors, but yeah, Payne are playing and Prezi are not, and that's that's the dealio with uh, at least that side of it all. But yeah. Okay, uh, it does I think slightly improve the field. I'm not that big of a pain guy, but like Prezi, they're like two moves away from being a contention to win this sort of event. So I don't think it's mm-hmm. that big a deal that they've been cut, uh, especially seeing as yeah, if you've got a contract with the org, uh, yeah, the five players. Sorry. You have no leg to stand on. And I guess if you're the org and you assume that you get to just field five random players, also is a bit silly. It feels a bit silly. Like, I've put on this big event. Uh, you've dropped your roster I thought I was inviting. You want to promote your academy and cut the fuck off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would have definitely built that into my contract that you can't just do that. That's stupid. Mm-hmm. So, no, mm-hmm. I do not side. I do not have any, like favor to give breezy on this one uh y'all kind of you did kind of get fucked but also you tried to fuck the event so i'm not a big fan of this from them like there's no real protest to have welcome pain i I think you've made some changes as well no you haven't i'm just very unfamiliar yeah they're missing they're missing nissan because of the contract debacle oh so they are missing someone that guy's new yeah okay i thought as much um but still pain's an interesting team uh the other big news more importantly Mm. I think so. This team probably, I think, had my money uh, for winning the event if it wasn't for the fact that they are missing their best player. And that's Metasport missing Nilo because he was. He's got some school stuff going on? Is that is that really what it is? Yep. He's got like an exam? Yep. What, what's going on? They didn't say what it was. They just said eco- academic reasons. But yeah, it's he's nearing graduation and so is Adam B, to be honest. But Nilo, I guess, has something lined up at that point, which isn't possible to uh, move around. 
They okay. they are in school. I think I mention this every time I talk about Metasport. Two of their players are still actively in high school, and their schools have been very accommodating to let them stay at home and play officials all day because they have still played the most officials out of anyone on HLTV this year, which hmm. is fucking crazy when you're only practicing after 5 p.m. So, um, I mean, well done, but unfortunately, Nyla can't go to this event. Um... I mean, fu- uh, fuck, that's that's a shame. They have announced the replacement as of yesterday. It is Plopsky, and I actually think that's a good move. I don't know what you think about having, putting Plopsky in this, in this team, but I think you're putting in someone who has the ceiling to maybe not match Nilo, but at least be good enough to keep with him and has a lot more he he is the most LAN experienced player on this team now at this point he's played 19 big events with NIP oh yeah and much much more in like actual tier 1 he's played a lot more even smaller events he's played a lot more than these guys have because most of them kind of came out during the um uh, online era so um i think they still have a pretty good shot at this uh, I, I i mean winning this event tall order still there's good teams here i mean um, Imperial, Furia, uh, Pain. I don't know how Pain are gonna look without Nissim, but Pain, OG. Like, there's teams here that they shouldn't that shouldn't lose to Metasport. But I mean, yeah, I I still I still chalk them up to have a pretty good uh, international land debut at this event, even with Plopsky, to be honest. But um, shame for Nilo. Shame for Nilo. He's never played. I I would almost wager to say he's never played an international land because I think he missed the We Play Academy League finals in Kiev when they were played on LAN. I think hmm. all of the times they were played, he either wasn't on Young Ninjas or they just uh, didn't get played yeah, on LAN. Or they just didn't qualify, I mean. Yes. Um, yeah, he, he has only ever played LAN events in Sweden and one Academy LAN in Norway, where they finished last. So, shame for Nilo, because this was huge for him. Like, yeah. They don't have any other big international land lined up. Who knows when the next one is going to come along? Um, so real shame for him, but it's. Uh, I think they still have a good uh, replacement lined up, and I'm still kind of optimistic for them. Yeah, I don't think Plopsky's a bad player. I just don't think he's good enough as a replacement. Uh, very subtle, uh, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> he is. Uh... Yeah, in terms of Swedish replacements, you can do you can't really do much better. Actually, I was going to say you can't do much worse, but more importantly, you can't do much better. Blobsky's a solid little player uh, as a rifler who can be more aggressive, take big fights, uh, you know, do the things that Nilo typically does in this roster. Pretty much the guy, uh, the guy you have to sign in Sweden right now. So fair enough, they picked up the right player. Just not sure they've got now like the firepower to go and win this, especially not with the limited time to prac and embed him. It's mm-hmm. going to be rough, but yeah, they made the right choice in that sense. It's definitely the right team, uh, the right player to bring in in this moment. Uh, I think the the alternative would have been someone like Spook or uh... yeah. Again, there's there's options, but they're, they're, I think they're all worse. Like there's no option as good uh, as Plopsky is. So that's that's it. that's the long and the short of it. I mean, do you think they're winning this event? Like, just I'm going to talk about favorites now. Oh, do you think they can win this? They can win this. I wouldn't. I won't. I won't put a yeah, bet. Technically, on it. everyone who's uh, performing at the event can win the event. But like, <laughs> no. I mean, I. I don't think Nine Z can win this. I don't think MIBR can win this. Uh, Monty, I don't think they can win this even. Even. Uh, I'd think it was difficult for Imperial and with Pain missing Nissim. I'm. I'm not really optimistic for them either. But Metasport, they have. Uh, Metasport against Furia is always a fun matchup, and if Metasport beat Imperial and Furia beat 9C as they should, we're gonna get that again, but on LAN, and that's gonna be all right, yeah. Because <laughs> um, they beat them twice to make Blast Showdown, that was like a whole thing. They mm. beat Furia twice conclusively, like this random little Swedish team of school children. Um, but I think you're right, OG could do something here. You are missing one thing. Heavy God is not playing with OG right now. He is out because of a medical issue. Yeah, uh, that's fine. As long as he's actually at the event, I don't mind. I don't think he might. There's, It's not a guarantee he's going to be at the event, I don't think. Okay, well, that's and a different it's question. Different. If it's not Heavy God, yeah. obviously, no, they don't win. They, they can't win. And there's also, there's also talk about Regali being out. There could be a whole new OG roster by the time this rolls out. This is still, what, two weeks away? Oh, um, shit, it is. April 18th. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. 10 days away. 
Oh, well, there could be a whole new OG roster because there are murmurs. I don't believe these rumors too hard, but like there are rumors Regali is out. There are rumors Heavy God is not actually out with a medical issue. He's just getting poached. Um, I've got a weird feeling that might be true as well. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Uh, this could be a whole different OG roster. So I wouldn't say this. Medisport, they have, I think they have some stability. They have had a bit of a rough period recently. Uh, they didn't actually prack anything. Like, but the, the talk was that they didn't actually prack anything since the major. Um, or even before that, whenever they played before. Because they took a big break. They took a big break up until, like, around the time of the major playoffs. And uh, apparently they sort of took that break because, guys, we have been playing, like, hundreds of game maps. So let's just take a break and then... Um, yeah, fair enough. They're uh, yeah. I think they can definitely win this. I honestly, yeah. All right, I'm gonna go out on a limb. I'll say they make. So this is the top. I'll make say they make top three. I'll, I'll actually say they make top three in their land debut, but that could also easily backfire because okay, several of these players have never played land outside of um, Sweden or yeah, yeah. So, and the team that will actually win after all that conversation will be Monty or something. <laughs> It'll be it'll be Furia, and that's gonna suck. <laughs> nah, it would be Furia. There ain't no way. There ain't no way. <laughs> I'll be so upset if Furia win this event. Because yeah, <laughs> they just... won't. Another two years on Case Rodas contract. Fuck. <laughs> He'll never yeah. leave. Yeah. <laughs> never goddamn leave. Yeah, it'll be interesting <sighs> yeah. to watch. Interesting to follow. And let's move on to the next very extensive section of this show. Wow, well, we're already over an hour in. Um, we're going to actually skip we were, a lot of crap. We're going to bring it if, up. But... If we were sensible, we'd make this a two-parter. But um... fuck, what do you mean? <laughs> when am I going to release the second part? Like, <laughs> Screw that. All right, let's yep. go on to it. The Eternal Shuffle. Uh, it's never-ending. They're always trying to get better. And for the most part, they make terrible decisions. CS Orcs. Now, the first thing to talk about is NIP. They've made a few moves not to in the like recent uh times but the one that you've put down here is adding wrinkle we've already talked about maxter uh before you went to copenhagen so yeah Technically, wrinkle yeah. is the one they've made yeah so wrinkle has been added and he's played a few maps and so far it looks like a genius amazing high iq move <laughs> i was when this was rumored i believe we talked about it i didn't seem that convinced uh i don't think i am still yet I think Wrinkle's a better Orper. Underline the word Orper than Hedrick. And he knows how to mm -hmm. play the Orp. In the current meta, a lot better than Hedrick. I don't really think he's going to be a wonderful level player. I still no. think he can be a very good tier 1 Orper, though. Like, I think in the in the bracket below, where you're talking like the Brokies and the Torshies of the world... I think he can find a spot at that sort of level, which is plenty for winning esports, uh, winning tier one events. So, mm -hmm. honestly, he ends up probably gonna, probably is going to be a good move. It's not, I think, what some people are envisioning, where they're like, "Oh my god, they found the next Monashi," or "It's wonderful 2.0." Like, no, I don't think he's as good as either one of them. But I think he'll be very good. I think he'll be good enough. Good enough. Yeah, I think for now he's good enough. Uh, he's played well. Yeah, he'll be better than Hedge. I had something. I had something on my mind. Uh, yeah, he's very well regarded among a lot of people. I, I remember, uh, like, a lot of people who have, who watch demos have like a lot of other players have said like I watched this guy's demo and yeah, he's the next big thing. So, um, I mean, but the thing, the thing that I, I'm going to keep reading, reiterating this. I, I we talk about this every single time we talk about NAP, and they're all per, Um Or I reiterate this. They already had a youngster opper with more than a year of play under his belt. He played well. So they scrap him and bench him and sell him to bait. And they're like, oh, they obviously didn't want to carry on in that direction anymore. They're probably going to get someone more experienced in that case because they got rid of their promising youngster. They pick up, up uh, another promising youngster and they basically start from square one when you already had over a year's worth of development under the belt. And I'm going to keep saying this until Threat DMs me on Twitter and tells me why they did this. Uh, why start over? Uh, like, because Cedric was kind of shit. I'm gonna be honest. You could, uh, yeah, yeah. There might be a reason about like why Wrinkle, Wrinkle's potential looks to be more than what Hedrick's was. But I mean, is it really such a big difference that Hedrick couldn't play well enough? Like, it, like could Hedrick not develop into an opera that could uh, play as well as Wrinkle? 
I was honestly, after the amount of play we saw from him and how the issues mm-hmm. that were there day one never seemed to move, I think he was mm-hmm. just not coachable as an opera. Like he's just not a player you could coach oh, up yeah. into the real opera. He was. I mean, Maui State's complaint was always that he was baiting. My complaint was he was shit on the orb. Like he can hit crazy flicks, but he just doesn't know where to put himself, when to push, when to be in the pack, when to not. Like you know, when to cover the angle. He just didn't know what he was doing. I'm just a bit lost yeah. positionally, uh, so I just thought that was the problem. And yeah, so bringing in Wrinkle, who is very much not lost, <laughs> and <laughs> as in terms of orping, is just as mechanically sound. I mean, he'll never be Hedrick on a rifle. But he doesn't need to, he's a fucking opera. So I think it's it's fair enough from that front. I agree on a certain part. You could assign someone who isn't a child. There are options out there, but I just don't think that any of them have the top end this guy does. Which does bring us to the other question of, so what is your fucking plan? Because you've signed <laughs> perhaps the oldest IGL like available to you in 28-year-old Alex. You've still kept Rez. You signed two teenagers. Are we a young team? Are we an old team? Are we trying to win now? Are we trying to win in 18 months? Uh, what, what's the direction here? Because we'll, We're really confused as outside observers about what the fuck you're trying to do. And that's always been a question with an IP is what is the actual plan? Not just how good is this individual signing? Like what's the overall plan here? I'm a bit confused. I genuinely don't see why they've gone with this series of moves in this order like it's 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 a bit confusing i I, i'm down for a young team just why did you sign alex then like is he like a band-aid like what is this i'm just gonna make a call back to one of the previous episodes when i said big uzera was old and he's one year younger than alex is and you said well that's actually a pretty good age for an igl when they start yeah again for winning now is fine if you're signing teenagers you're not trying to win now Look at mouse sports. Uh, they but, aren't but winning does, does Alex, now. Does Alex, does Alex really have one year's worth of window and then he's just trash after No, that? he has like, more because he's... Well, he needs more. Whether he has it is another question because he's not experienced. <laughs> mm-hmm. He hasn't played a bunch of majors the way Big Zero has. He's played fuck all because he's been in Spain this entire time. <laughs> and he's also playing That's internationally fair. for the first time. Big Zero has been calling on a Brazilian team and is still on a Brazilian team. All of these things need to be factored. And so the Alex signing makes no sense to me. And he also looks old. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a beard. He looks old. Yep. He's got too let's much dad energy for me. Like... <laughs> let's see. Let's see what happens. Man. Um, well, yeah, that's, 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 that's the question I have for NIP. Otherwise, yeah, so far it looks like a good signing. He looks talented. It's fine. Next move. Gamer Legion have made half a move, because uh, I don't count the Andu part of this as real. Uh, they've cut Kios and Acor. Finally. I mean, we, we all had to spend like 12 months yelling about how shit they were. And they've added Andu. It's an academy player. Ignore it. And Slend, which is a real move. Um, Slend has been a I mean, it's, it's, it's a trial, but it, that's a real move. Um, yeah, Having Andu play with them isn't a real move. Slend is. Because Slend on Endpoint was... Well, initially he was like, oh, he came out of the academy from Mouse Sports and he's like fundamentally sound and he's finding his feet and getting up there and like now he's making better plays. In the last couple months, he was crazy. In CS2, he really found some form. And so this was an opportune moment to sign him. You're taking them from a team who are known for signing cheap, selling, not too much more expensive, uh, and developing their players well. So, fair enough. Good signing. I it's think also, he's going to be an upgrade uh, to Acor because Acor has just been washed for the last year and a half. So, credit yeah. to Slend. He also played this well in a period where Endpoint were not playing well, and they had a lot of trouble. So uh, Yeah, because they made some other moves that were less um, smart. Cough switch. Yeah, they cough. sold off um, sold off Heavy God, namely, and signed someone who definitely couldn't replace him. So yeah, no, that was that was a it was a risk. They like taking risks, especially on players outside of EU. Uh, but mm-hmm. why why would you pick a player who's been playing in NA? Like that's the opposite <laughs> <laughs> of a good idea. Yeah, like, you're not going to get much out of that guy, and they didn't. They really couldn't. Uh, so hopefully, Switcher finds a spot. I mean, wasn't he calling in the states? Like, am I going crazy? Like, wasn't he like? I think you're completely wrong. Did he even play in the States? Switcher? Yeah, he played on Davenport University. He... Oh, he did! Fuck, I thought, at, I thought at first that you were making an absolute 
noob mistake and mistaking him with Swisher, the actual no. good North American player. <laughs> yeah, no, he did Switcher say that. or Switcher. I think he was calling for Davenport Switcher, as well. Switcher. Like he might have been dude are we do we care about davenport university no but that's the point why would you sign one of their players like i get it he went out for his year abroad or whatever but like there was better moves to make and uh i think end point i got found out i gotta figure out what to do in the future as well if they've generally had really good scouting even if it is a very statistical heavy statistically heavy like statistically heavy no it's statistics focused let's put it that way the way they scout initially um, but i do believe they they do their homework behind the scenes on the actual demo so fair enough they're gonna find the right re- replacements and hopefully game legion find a better player than andu because uh, he might not be bad like eventually but currently he's not he's not good so mm. holy crap his stats are crazy but <laughs> <laughs> i've never looked at his stats i've just seen him on game legion his stats are fine but I don't think he's their long-term solution. Holy crap, they might actually keep him with this number. With these numbers, he might stay on. I've never... I didn't think he was particularly special when I watched them. But, okay, if he's footing up those numbers, they might keep him. I... I yeah, okay. I just thought he was an academy kid. They brought him up just to fill in the void. And the one game I saw of theirs, he wasn't good. So, I didn't realize he was putting these numbers up. So, they might keep him. Um, they might actually keep him, but no interesting to see where they go from here obviously the combo that i said they would they should keep of snacks vault and reluctantly isaac just because uh, i guess he's third on the list to cut um yeah that was the team they end up keeping unsurprising just predictable good gming so good job there um we'll see how it goes uh if andrew does end up being that guy great good for him uh his form i mean his actual map by map stats are all over the place uh so we'll see how it ends up going but yeah he's played nine maps the average is good map to map it's terrible we'll see uh prezi release team we talked about this uh so yeah there you go flyquest who most famously had flyquest red the female team have picked up the former greyhound roster who were playing under the title jeeves um there's not much more to say about it you know the roster it's the one with dexter recently got added to into and then failed to make the major, which immediately led to Greyhound dropping them because financial reasons. They have no money. Yeah, somehow all the other major sticker money they got went down the shitter. Uh, I guess the cost of living know. in hey, Australia really is that me. crazy. What what fucking pay did Dexter ask for? <laughs> like, yeah, what, what are they paying these guys? Like, <laughs> is Alice there sitting here on like a six figure salary? What the fuck is going on? To play Aussie CS? Surely not. But anyway, more importantly, they now have a new org. That's cool. Uh, Forza have made some changes, and by made some changes, I mean completely fucking they made smashed a everything to pieces, and are yeah. allegedly signing Aurora. Cause it's not actually no. Uh. <laughs> oh, have you put those in one title like some? Yeah, because oh, Resalt was one of the guys who got ben- when the entire team got <laughs> benched. Resalt immediately moved to Aurora to replace. Uh, okay, but that was kind of Beltranox. Um, yeah, right. That was Force the bench the entire team. Yeah, force the bench the entire team. Rumor. Can we put rumor different is, links know. on different lines. Like, is it is it that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> like, I thought I thought they right. signed Aurora with Resalt, like instead of someone. That's how that read. No. <laughs> no, okay. okay, no. So there's no Falls roster right now. We'll see where they go. Uh, rest in peace, Jerry's career. Um, the the rumor that Overdrive put out was that go- the rumor that Overdrive put out is that Gokushima is about to get Isek banned, and that's part of why they're benching the roster. They apparently want to get a new roster, but I can't imagine why they would bench Shalfi if that was the case. Yeah. Okay. And Aurora make a change, adding Resalt in for... Who did you say it was? Yeah, he took the empty spot that oh, Belchanok made on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if those of you who are not familiar with Belchanok, uh, I understand. Nothing more to add. <laughs> um, uh, so far, they banged. They qualified for Yun Shopping and they beat NIP twice. They beat Apex. They beat Medisport. They didn't lose a map. Result was good. Everyone was good. Uh, Deco and Kenzie went fucking nuts. Uh, this team is kind of dangerous again. Yeah, because they were really, they were really like dangerous when Norway and Kenzie were like a, a, a rifle duo. Then they added Deco, and it kind of fell off in terms of not Kenzie, not Deco, but Norway kind of took a little bit of a dip but resort's been banging so that's mm-hmm. been good they've added back to their firepower they're always a firepower heavy team strategically mm-hmm. not that deep watching their demos is a big clusterfuck with people hitting headshots and that's pretty cool but like at the same time it's just not that complicated uh the next move that we've listed bait 
they actually do sign Hedrick, and they also add Baz, who is not currently officially listed, but I'm sure that's he to come. will be. Okay, that's to Bate, come. Bate didn't yet clarify who is leaving in his place, okay. but Angel TV said it was owner, so owner is going to be off, and then owner is going to be wait, owner's calls. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and owners are really promising IGL. The last time I watched them play. Yep. That's going to be an interesting set of moves then. I wonder where he'll end up. Because uh, no, there was a time when I thought Ona would be going over to Na'Vi. Like when they yep. were still full Ukrainian. Because he was that good. And he was making, you know, miracles happen with a roster that was Wrinkle, three randoms and him. Like, essentially. Uh, but no, Baz is a... Oh! Nipple is calling right now. Or NPL. Nipple's going to be calling. <laughs> Nipple is calling already. So yeah. Really? Yeah. Ah, oh, whatever. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about this. I don't know about this. I hate There's a quick involved. fire on. More moves. More moves. <laughs> yeah, Baz is Baz is a guy who showed promise on certain Spirit Academy rosters, but he still doesn't have a fucking picture because that's how unknown he is. We'll see how that goes. Rare Atom have lost their Europeans, which I believe was Fuzi and Corey. Fuzi Corey and the fin two Finns who were also there, uh, coaching and managing, which was okay, Twister so... and uh, the other guy. So Rare Atom is now looking very different. I'm assuming uh, they have two players. They're missing two players. They have not signed anyone yet. Oh, they have two players. They haven't signed anyone at all. Yeah. Oh, because God. Summer also left, I think. Oh, yes. No, Summer is still there. Uh, who's the kid? Slowy. X-Pro. Slowy left. X-Pro's gone. X-Pro. When the fuck was Slowy here? Never mind. Yeah, X-Pro left. Wow. I, I really didn't prep this move at all. I wasn't expecting this yeah. move either. I mean, I know Rare Atom kind of went down the toilet when they lost their roster to Ty Lu mm. way back when. But then Ty Lu yeah. proceeded to ruin for a bit uh, before finally remembering, why sign young fraggers if you're just going to Replace them with old men who don't do anything. So they went back to the old Fragger, the young Fragger lineup. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. Rare Atom. It was a cool stint, for, I guess, for Fuzi and Corey. And Fuzi really showed off some uh, quality play. I mean, last three months, his average his rating is 1.42. Uh, he got Please. a great opportunity to smurf. So hopefully he gets picked up by someone in EU. Yeah, I mean, he, played, he played well. He, he is in Europe now, and he played well when they played the showdown against Cloud9. Uh, yeah. Individually, he played well. He did. Uh, he did. Yeah, he's been, he's been cosplaying as simple for the past couple of months, so. Hmm. Let's see what he does now in Europe. So hopefully he gets picked up. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Amcal have cut Nickelback and are trailing Stein. Uh, very confusing. We did talk about this briefly before the show went live because we don't know who's going to be calling and nothing's been officially confirmed by Amcal themselves. I checked the tweet and all three replies. No one even asked, which is a bit weird. Uh, mm -hmm. So they even said, oh, we're parting ways with our captain who's been a great leader, blah, blah, blah. Didn't say the new captain is, so I guess yep. that'll be announced at some point. Maybe maybe it's Sadaim. I doubt it. I'm thinking more Crad or Travis is going to be taking over the reins. Probably Crad. And yeah, that's yep. that's something to keep an eye on because uh, they were a team who you know shocked some people at the uh, RMRs, uh, but I see especially catching a lot of uh, attention. Uh, one win have signed a new team. It's Buster, Nealon, Ryujin, Latic, and Joe with Solar coaching. Um, hold on, if I'm not going crazy. One win. What? Yes, right. Uh, I'm not going crazy. This is hilariously mediocre. Um, <laughs> there's. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't think much of Nealon as a caller. Buster as a support is experienced and good, but he's also not a very vocal player and not one I think is going to have much effect on the team. Uh, Joe, I've rated on certain rosters, but he's getting to the end of it. I'm sorry. Uh, Ryujin, I think, is very explosive, but so up and down and not very cerebral that I think he, he, he he's a nice basis upon which to build off of, but he's not he's a bit limiting as well. Uh, then Latic on the AWP. He's a bit too CIS for my liking to make it through to the Tier 1. So I think this roster is going to be hard-stuck Tier 2. This is going to be a hard-stuck yep. Tier 2 roster. All right, sweet. Welcome to K23 2.0. Uh, ooh, they're maybe a little bit better than that. But yeah, uh, nine have cut key. So they're now no one. They are no one, and there's going to be a new team, I think. But I did just mm. put this in because key is, uh, I think, a player who is an attractive prospect for a lot of teams. Yeah. Uh, especially now post major. Uh, I mean, according to Kassad, he had a, I think he had a $200,000 buyout when he, when Bleed <laughs> inquired about him like three that's months a ago. Bit much. Uh... That was three months ago. His contract has probably run down a bit since then. He's also transfer listed, which probably brings the buyout even further down. I could see him on a lot of teams. Yeah, I could see him making a change, but I don't know, I'm not too hyped about him as a player. So we'll see how it goes. He's not a bad piece. He's just, yeah, mm. 
probably not, not going to improve most tier 1 sides. So that's the uh, that's the very quick retake the week. We managed to get through all of that in about 10 15 minutes. So I'm glad. We, even, we skipped so we skipped so many noteworthy transfers as well, but they, these Did were we? the fun ones. There's okay, if, I, if I'm just going to do a quick fire round. Yeah, Havu switched the player. Nesim has this whole contract debacle with Sharks. Uh IHC are back with a new team, which is funny. Bentet has a new team. Um, there's uh, Sashi made a change, which I guess is meaningful. Uh, Secret bought in Juve, who was coaching into the breach. Uh, there's a new Brazilian team with Leo Drunky, um, and like they're hardly noteworthy, but I mean, there's there's <laughs> there were there were things to talk about. Okay, yeah, there's some other stuff that I wouldn't have cared much for. Um... I do. Of course you would, but yeah, we we have so much on the eternal shuffle that it wasn't really worth uh, including. You would have cared about entropic. Scraps. Entropic bench like and en entropic benched oxygen. He's a retake the week staple. We need to mention him. Uh, entropic True. Benched, I mean, that, uh, we did mention him. That, that really came up. Yeah, I remember that conversation last episode. Um, yeah. So cool. That's it. Let's go to prospect of the week. Um, because no offense to any of you, it's been an hour and a half. My voice is dying, and I'm hungry. So, prospect of the week. You're going to go first, because you've now put two names that I don't recognize. It was one name I didn't recognize, and it's two. So please explain yourself. Who the fuck are these people? Okay. First one. Um, uh, the first one is Melo9. And it just so happens that this week is Formula 1 weekend. I was up this morning watching the Japanese Grand Prix. And I was thinking about this Max Verstappen kid. And uh, when he was kind of coming through, he was the youngest Formula 1 driver ever. He's going to stay the youngest Formula 1 driver ever. He was 17 when he started. You're no longer allowed to do that. And he's all the better for it. He is, what, 26, and he's already a three-time, soon four-time world champion, and he is an experienced uh, competitor at this point in that sport. So it really does pay to start quite early. Melo 9, not really famous outside Sweden, I would imagine. He has been described as the wor the Sweden's most marketed future prodigy. And that was Selahir, I'm going to quote him. Selahir said that. And it's true. Because he has basically done, I, I mean, as a competitor, he's done basically fuck all, let's be honest. He hasn't played anything noteworthy. He plays on Young Gods, which is Godsense kind of inofficial academy roster because they're not actually under contract. They just have like a, a deal to use their name and they use their headquarters and stuff. But yeah, um, he's on Godsense academy roster. He is 14 and he has been uh, hyped up. That's Hence the 09, he's born in 2009. He has been hyped up as this oh future my God, uh, player. Oh my god, secondary school. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're it was all the first year of it. it. was the second year of secondary school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my um... knees. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I, was, I was in second grade. So, yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, he, he, <laughs> uh, he has basically done... He's done... He's done not a lot. This Young Gods team has never done anything. I mention him now because he's playing. He was playing in the Lucky Casino Cup, uh, which is yeah, going. I looked at his profile. Monument. The only game I found was the Lucky Casino Cup. Yes, I mention him now because this was his HLTV debut along with two of his teammates. Uh, I'm just mentioning him because with the Formula One, you, you know, with Max Verstappen in mind, I just thought, well, all right, it does pay to start. Yeah, <laughs> it obviously pays to start early and like get your foot in in the door early and i don't know of anyone else who's doing this at this age like uh basically worldwide pretty much so he's got a leg up on some other people he's already on hltv and he's only 14 years old good on him uh if i'm mentioning a serious prodigy because honestly they played one game against metasport which was a big win to even get there and they actually forced them to play some decent cs on uh, mirage it was 6-6 six, six at the half um but they didn't. They didn't really do much. Like I can't say I watched Melo Nine and thought this guy's a generational prodigy. It's just that, you know, someone out of that generation, born in two thousand nine, is going to be the big next player, and Melo Nine is at least the first to show up to that discussion, and he's noteworthy because of that. Someone who actually played really well was Lil Mix, uh, who brought Alliance very, very close in the quarterfinal last night, and their eighteen-year-old Opper Six, who I'm going to mention as because honestly, this guy he he keeps showing up. Um, in the very gra like kind of grassroots level Swedish CS, he played in in the UK for a while uh, with Team Seven AM, and they even played a frag at Delphi at that point. That's probably Every why time it's he so shows good, up, then. the UK CS match, just the goats. 
<laughs> even uh he just he keeps showing up sometimes and every time he does he has really good numbers and he's you know showing uh, some good form on the op he's now on lil mix and i believe they are about to get like a per- sort of permanent roster going here lil mix have had trouble signing players uh but they are 18 years old good player good roster good team i really rate quicks and i really rate um the pl- uh, other players on this team poi as well as well as another one uh played really well against the lions especially six carried basically well he didn't carry uh the map that they lost but he, he basically carried the team on all of these three maps and it was uh great to see good player good player and he is my he's probably my actual prodigy of the week so or prospect of the week so yeah male 09 and six two swedes okay two kids no one will have heard of and that's exactly what we're here to do i uh, mm-hmm. appreciate it especially picking a 14 year old with a 0.8 rating um just because yep. Oh, he's 14 years old, god damn it. Like, that's fair enough. Uh, myself, I've gone with Gizmi. Now, Gizmi is playing for Monty. He came from Monty Academy. Has stepped up in their void of players, pretty much, is how to put it. They've just lost people, now they're trying to scramble for replacements. And Gizmi's one of them. Uh, there's two, I believe, Academy players currently standing in, or trialing, or whatever you want to call it. He's been the better of the two. He's had a really good week statistically. I'm going to be honest, though, I was not expecting this. When he first started his trial, I thought he was going to be very short-term. And also, when I watched his first couple of games, I didn't think he was that good. I honestly did not see much future. I thought, yeah, you know, cool, he still needs some time in academy, play, find himself, find him some confidence. He's not that guy. This week, he's been that guy. <laughs> he's really been that guy. He's been amazing. Uh, put up a really good rating in their wins. He's been phenomenal. He's had a few down maps, but uh, so what? He's mostly been positive. So yeah, I thought shout out gives me because there's not that many uh, opportunities to shout out UK players. And when finally one comes out of the academies and into the real teams, he starts performing. So I've really got to shout that out. Like gives me an impressive week, makes into prospects of the week. Hopefully, we'll see more of him because Monty are now playing some real events. He's going to be attending them, I hope, unless something changed in the last second and we end up with a like 16th Brazilian team at that team. At that event. Uh, but no. Mm-hmm. Not much to report. I can't tell you much about his place. I've not watched enough of him. I can just tell you that it's nice to have a young Brit playing good Counter-Strike. So here we are. Gizmi. Yeah. We talked about him when he joined Monty because he was on uh, Viperio that one time they made it to an RMR. He didn't play very well. But no, he, he, played he was a name. Yeah, yeah he, was an, he was a name to remember at the very least. And... Uh, they played on Monty Gen. The few Agile TV maps they played, he was banging. He stood in. He's been the token stand-in for Monty whenever they, they've had roster trouble. Always registered as, as their sub. Yeah, um, and he's not been brilliant, not been a... but until now. Yeah, but like Bro wasn't brilliant either. So like, if we're if we're if we're saying like, I mean, they they obviously could still do some stuff with Bro, and he wasn't really doing too much either. So um, no, I didn't think he was. Him. He was slightly. He was, I, just, I thought he was slightly worse than Bro for the most part. But like, yeah, he's now been way better. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm just saying he he doesn't need to come in and replace SDY right away because they've obviously, uh, uh, whatever. They also brought in Ryu and he is he's been slightly worse. So yeah, uh, good on gives me. He had a very good week. I paid a lot of attention to the Yun Shipping qualifier they played this week, obviously, and he played very well. Um, yeah. Mon- obvi- unfortunately not going to be able to uh, repeat that in Chengdu because they have travel troubles. I believe some of the players actually are in China right now, but some of them could also couldn't go, which is a shame. Hmm. Um, yeah. So, uh, a good pick, good pick. I like Gizmi. I think we... Uh, yeah. We'll see a lot more good of him on land in the coming weeks. Uh, and hopefully we keep seeing positives. So, yeah. That pretty mm. much wraps up the show. Uh, I'm now going to do the thing I forgot to do at the start of the show, which I always forget to do. But remember to become a member. It's tradition. And it's then tradition you get to point. ask questions in the Q&A and see videos early. Uh, if I ever make another video, because God damn it, I'm really, really fucking slacking on anything that isn't podcast right now. Uh, but no. Yeah. Members get behind the scenes access. They get the Q&A. And they get, you know, special emotes, which are very nice. Uh, but no. That's going to be all for us. Uh, be sure to check out Quack's Twitch is going to be in the description uh, with alongside his Twitter, but his Twitch is more important, because that's where he actually does stuff, rather than just talk about Sweden. <laughs> yeah. Um, but though, heads up, he might do half his streams in Swedish, so it's all redundant anyway. 
<laughs> but yeah, we'll see you next Sunday, hopefully with uh, some more stuff to talk about, some more big moves. And yeah, see you in the next one. Goodbye.